What are the three heavens? 2 Corinthians 12 verse 2 says, I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago, whether in the body I cannot tell, or whether out of the body I cannot tell. God knoweth such an one caught up to the third heaven. Here, Paul was speaking of himself. He is one of the greatest apostles in the history of the Bible. He had multiple encounters with the Lord. Of the 27 books in the New Testament, 13 or 14 are traditionally attributed to Paul. In 2 Corinthians 12 verse 2, he was caught up to the third heaven. If there is a third heaven, then there must be a first and a second heaven. A number of false doctrines have been birthed from the fact that there are three heavens. One of which is that there are three different levels of heaven. A level for super committed Christians. In other words, a level of Christians who have obtained a high level of spirituality, a level for standard, ordinary Christians, and a level for Christians who did not serve God faithfully. But this belief does not align with Scripture. There are those who argue that Paul is not saying that there are three heavens or even three levels of heaven. But I disagree with this point, because for there to be a third heaven, there must be a first and a second. The atmospheric heaven, the first heaven. The first heaven includes the atmospheric heavens including the air that we breathe, as well as the space that immediately surrounds the earth. This area is called the troposphere. The troposphere starts at the Earth's surface and extends 8 to 14.5 kilometers high, 5 to 9 miles. This part of the atmosphere is the most dense. Almost all weather is in this region. The next section above this area is called the stratosphere. The stratosphere starts just above the troposphere and extends to 50 kilometers, 31 miles high. The ozone layer, which absorbs and scatters the solar ultraviolet radiation, is in this layer. Genesis 1 verse 6 to 8 provides answers to the question of what their first heaven is. It reads, and God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament, and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. The first heaven was what God created on the second day of his creative works on earth. It is also called the firmament, that is, the immediate atmosphere above us. God created the first heaven and separated the water above from the water beneath. In Matthew 6 verse 26, where Jesus referred to the birds of the air that are fed by God, despite the fact that they neither sow nor reap, the Greek word for air is auranos, and it is translated as heaven. So the firmament above is the first heaven, as created by God in Genesis 1 verse 8. And what a wonder this first heaven is. The beauty that you see in the first heaven, 
the vastness of space in the first heaven. You can see just a small glimpse of the glory of God in the first heaven. Have you ever been in a plane and looked out of the window and just thought how big the sky is? Next time you are on a plane, just look out the window of your plane and just reflect on how big God is. To create something of this magnitude and scale, our mind cannot comprehend such power. The second heaven is the outer space. The celestial heaven is the second heaven. This use of the term heaven refers to outer space or the stellar heaven. It includes the sun, moon and stars. It is where the stars, the moon and the sun and other planetary bodies are found. Jesus referred to this heaven in Matthew 24 verse 29 where he said, Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. This setting is different from the earth's atmosphere or what we called the firmament. In Deuteronomy 4 verse 19, Moses warned the Israelites not to worship the host of heaven such as the stars, the moon and the sun. So these elements are also in heaven, but this heaven is not the realm of God, but of constellations of stars. Again, it is believed that Paul was referring to the second heaven in Ephesians 6 verse 12 which says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. The word high places is rendered as heavenly realms or heavenly places in many other translations of the Bible. There are several scholars who attribute the second heaven to be the heavens where spiritual warfare takes place. However, the Bible does not expressly say this, but it is a reasonable conclusion to reach. Some scholars argue that the second heaven was where an angel wrestled with the prince of Persia in the days of prophet Daniel. Daniel 10 verse 12 to 14 Then he said to me, Do not fear, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard. And I have come because of your words, but the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me twenty-one days. And behold, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, for I had been left alone there with the kings of Persia. Now I have come to make you understand what will happen to your people in the latter days for the vision refers to many days yet to come. Third heaven is the realm of God and his holy angels and the living creatures. Although this realm is indeed the realm of God, the Bible makes it abundantly clear that God cannot be limited to any one geographical place. At the dedication of the first temple in the city of Jerusalem, King Solomon asked the following question when praying to the Lord. 1 Kings 8 verse 27, But will God indeed dwell on the earth? Behold, the heaven and heaven of heavens cannot contain thee. How much less this house that I have builded? This heaven is also called the heaven of heavens in scriptures. It is God's dwelling place. Deuteronomy 10 verse 14 says, Behold, 
the heaven and the heaven of heavens is the Lord's thy God, the earth also with all that therein is. When Jesus promised to prepare a place for us after his departure from the earth in John 14, he was talking about the third heaven. We know this because Jesus said that there are many mansions in his Father's house. God's dwelling place is the heaven of heavens. At the martyrdom of Stephen, he saw the vision of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of power in heaven, Acts 7 verse 55. But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, looked up to heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. The third heaven is where the devil and his angels were cast out from. It is God's atmosphere and presence. Hebrews 9 verse 24 testifies to this, saying, For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. This is the location Isaiah saw in his vision. Isaiah 6 verse 1 to 4 In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims, each one had six wings, with twain he covered his face, and with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. And one cried unto another, and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts, the whole earth is full of glory. And the posts of the door moved at the voice of him that cried and the house was filled with smoke. Now according to scripture, we see instances where Satan appears here on earth and even in the third heaven. Job 1 verse 6 and 7 Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. And the Lord said to Satan, from where do you come? So Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro on the earth, and from walking back and forth on it. Satan is not locked up in hell, the Bible does not teach this. Paintings and movies convey the idea that Satan is not on this earth, but this is incorrect and quite frankly a lie. The Bible reveals to us time and time again that our enemy, the devil, plays a very active role on this earth, and he accuses the saints in God day and night. Christians, we are in a war. Our enemy, the devil, is on this earth, and one of the biggest tricks the devil uses is to make people believe that he is not real, or that he is not a part of this world. But he is. Christians, we are in a war. Don't be ignorant of your enemy. Ephesians 6 verse 11 to 13 Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. You are to take a stand in the name of Jesus Christ.